Welcome to Through the Noise. I'm your host, Ernesto Glucksman. The shipping industry has about 55,000 cargo ships. It's a $1.5 trillion a year industry. Can somebody out there reduce their energy consumption? That's what my next guest is about, and he's doing it with wind. Let's get started. All right, man. Uh, Aubrey, thank you for joining me on the show. Thank you Can't wait me. to ask you all these questions. <laughs> I know we we're just talking off mic that you know French is your first love language, and then English is your second or your or maybe your third. I think we were speaking in Spanish a little bit, so yeah. don't worry about it. We'll just take our time. Man, appreciate you coming on the show. Um, Audrey Bovin, you're the CEO, oh, uh, sorry, the C Chief Operating Officer and Co-Founder of Zephyr and Bore. Yeah. Did I, did I pronounce it right? Did I pronounce yeah. all of it? Yeah. Okay. Totally right. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very, I have to say the company name is a very, um, it's like a, it's a good sailing company, you know, name. But just to give the, just to tee this up, you guys are in the business or getting into the business of making more efficient trans, uh, transport, cargo trans, transporting vessels, yeah. in, in particular, using wind power to help move these things along without reductions in speed and things like that. So I'm really intrigued uh, about your progress and where, where you guys are as a, as a group. So um, let's just start off this way, you know. When let's just say you and I just sat down for a sandwich or something, and I'm like, "Hey, man, uh, so what do you do for a living? What what is the thing you tell the the, the person you're like you're not sure you're going to get into a conversation with? But you're like, ah, eh, I'll give yeah. it a try." Yeah, I would say that uh, I developed uh, wind uh, propelled uh, vessel project. Uh, from conception to operation, and uh, I build up a shipping company with uh, with friends, and uh, our objectives was to develop um, a ship that is able to provide uh, ecological transport uh, freight solutions, and uh, we came to the fact that uh, today. The, the most efficient uh, and pragmatic way to, to do that is actually to reuse sails uh, on merchant ship, uh, not using the sails that we were using by the past 100 years ago, uh, but using the, the efficiency that uh, we developed in the world of sailing and the automation that we we'll, uh, develop uh, in the world of racing sails, sorry. Mm. And the automation we have developed in the world of uh, yachting uh, sales. So we are combining this technical progress uh, to develop wind propelled ship uh, that are not completely propelled by wind, but partially propelled. And uh, the wind and the power of the sails allow to reduce the consumption of the engine and so to reduce the CO2 emissions. Oh, and so. Man. We started five years ago, and by the time uh, we succeeded in convincing a big aerospace company called Ariane Group. Uh, yeah, I got to ask you about that. To give us to, to us, Zephyr and Bore, and another company called GIFMAR, with whom we made an, a joint venture, uh, to award us uh, with a, a long term uh, transport contract allowing us to build and uh, to operate uh, by the beginning of ne next year, because we are building the ship right now, uh, the first uh, modern wind propelled uh, vessel uh, that is uh, being built and uh, that will be operated. Wow. I mean, that's quite... It's a bit long to introduce myself. I, <laughs> I go shorter normally, but uh, as we are talking... I just finished uh, eating my sandwich, but I just ordered another one because I'm now super intrigued. Um, man, where to start with all, with all of this? Because um, I can, you know, you if you look at a ship going through the ocean, it's they're highly inefficient in the sense, right? And I mean, they can carry a lot of stuff, but they use up a lot of a lot of energy 
getting it across the ocean, right? So if you were to put sails that could offset some of that effort, just make mm. this, you know, use this, use the wind as it comes when you can, you know, I can imagine that would reduce the drag or reduce, you know, help propel the ship further. But like, what are, what are some of the ranges of like efficiencies you can achieve when you have your, these sails on, on these cargo ships? Yeah. So you're, you're, you're right. But I mean, uh, I was, I, I'm okay with the following of your question, but not the beginning, but we will talk okay. about the shipping challenges after, but uh, I think, I guess. Uh, but um, about uh, the efficiency, uh, so we work on the sails. So we use the wind to, to, and the sails to propel uh, partially the ship. But as well, we work on the efficiency of the hull and so to, to reduce the drag of the hull. And uh, we work also on uh, how we can optimize the engine uh, to follow the variation of power uh, of, of the sails. So uh. it's, not, it's not just the sail we are working on. It's, uh, it's a all the ship we we are we we are investigating and innovating uh, step by step, um, and today we are as well working on the how to offset the fossil uh, the residual fossil fuel we have with uh, alternative fuels. But this takes longer than the, mm -hmm. the sales. Uh, but to answer to your question today, depending on the project and depending on the, I mean the size of the ship and the speed of the ship. Uh, and the, 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 the sailing area, uh, we are able to reach from 20% to 80% of savings, of fossil fuel savings uh, to, to, yeah, to, carry, to carry goods. So if we take specifically the project of, uh, we are doing for, for Aryan Group, uh, we are reaching 30% of savings. Uh, we plan to reach um but uh yeah and uh, this is uh, already significant because we are on a on a very uh industrial ship and uh we are reaching uh, uh quite high speed uh because uh, we are not uh, affecting so much the transit time uh span uh of the of the of the transport so wow okay so so you know when you look at, you know, your website and you look at the initial mm. product, you see these beautiful accordion like structures that stand out above, right? You sort of see that that's the most visible aspect of your work, but that's not the only aspect you're dealing with the whole ship design along with the other partners to find yeah. the more efficient. And then I would presume this isn't like set up a sale and then you got to have you know controls and you, you're trying to, you probably have to automate a lot of this work, right? For cargo, right? Yeah, you're right. Uh, so for, for, from, from our part, we work on the ship design uh, with partners, so with, with naval architects, uh, especially for this ship, the canopy uh, that we are building for, with our partner GIFMAR, that we are building uh, for, for, for our own group. We worked with uh, VPLP Design, that is a French uh, naval architecture firm, and with uh, Root Ship Design, that is a, a Dutch uh, a naval architecture firm. Uh, and for the sales, we are working with uh, a French uh, company called Aero, uh, that is uh, that that has designed and will industrialize uh, this type of sales. Uh, that is a very groundbreaking uh, sales uh, because they have a shape uh, not like a conventional sales but uh, like we call that type of sale wing sales uh, because okay. they, they have a, a profile that is close to the one of a, of a wing uh, plane and um, and so so we 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 are working with this, those different partners on uh, on the on the ship on this ship and uh, uh, Aero to, to make the, the sales completely automated and lowerable because basically the profile is the one of a, of a rigid uh, wing sail as uh, it is used, for instance, on America's Cup boat. Uh, to make it lowerable and to make it automated, uh, it took them uh, a lot of years of R&D and uh, several prototypes for now being 
able to build the, the first four uh, wing sales, uh, automated wing sales that will be installed on, uh, on our project. Uh, wow. I, the, um, on the, so let's talk about that particular project. That's yeah. the Ariane. That's a, that's a rocket ship. So are they bringing parts across to the launching pad? I mean, what's the, what, what's the use case for the particular ship that you're designing with your partners? Uh, basically, uh, Ariane Group is launching satellites from uh, French Guiana okay. and uh, they are building it uh, in Europe. So uh they have been always using uh, shipping transport to carry the goods from europe to french guiana and uh so each time they they do a new satellite launcher they uh they uh they work with uh, a ship owner and a shipping company to have a, a ship that is uh, dedicated to their uh, to their transport and that is uh, specific and so they uh, call for a tender and uh, we were looking for prospects uh, of uh, like a big industrial company with uh, the ability to commit on a long-term freight agreement because uh, we it, it is what we we needed for doing uh, such a pro project uh, like us because uh, we, we are talking about investing a lot of money in a, in a, in a very innovative ship so uh, there is a uh, technical challenges, but uh, as well economical challenges, and we needed to make the project realistic to have a long-term uh, freight uh, uh, transport commitment. And uh, Ariane Group was able to, to do that with this contract, but it was a tender, and uh, we were in competition, and so we we had to answer with an innovative solution, but as well to being able to 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 to, to reach. Uh, the economic target uh, uh, and the operational target that uh, re require requirement uh, that were asking uh, uh, Ariane Group. And so this was a challenge for us to find a, a good balance between the, uh, being innovative and in the same time having to be industrial. And uh, it is exactly, exactly what we wanted to do when we started our project because we wanted to demonstrate that today reusing wind and sails on ship is uh, um, a competitive solution to allow an industrial transport and an ecological transport at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're basically, you know, there's a certain amount of energy that exists in the wind that you're pushing your ship through. And if mm -hmm. you're not capturing that or repurposing that, then it's just like you're leaving energy on the side, right? And then you have yeah. to you have to account for that, which everybody's used to, which is fill up more gas, more fuel for the ship just to do the routes, right? And no one's thinking, wait a minute, we <laughs> what's all this all this wind we're that we're pushing through, that's that's pushing the hull, that's in behind. I mean, that's I mean, I don't know. To me, it seems like you know, from an outside perspective. It would be like this seems obvious to try to do. Now, from an from an inside perspective, how challenging is it? Because you're, you know, fuel varies on price, but wind varies in all kinds of ways, right? Direction, strength, and so forth. Totally. So basically, when we started, we we were sure about uh, two things. The first, the first thing is that. Uh, shipping needs to do its energy transition as all industrial sectors and there is no solutions it's uh, it's an industry that is 100 percent dependent on fossil fuels and there is no magical fuels uh, that are cheap and ecological and available everywhere so they, we are they would have done it by now right fuel so expensive they, for ships that they would have already used it if there was right if there was yeah, something yeah 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 yeah, yeah for sure and uh even if everybody wanted uh, and pay the price, there is, uh, it will take time to implement uh, all the production process and all the industrial process mm -hmm. to, to, to produce this new type of fuels. So I believe it will come and it, it is, uh, it is uh, of course, uh, synthetic fuels and alternative and bio, not, but synthetic fuels are, are part of the future. Uh, but uh, but uh, today, it does not exist. And five years ago, six years ago, when we started, it was even not uh, 
in the in the conversation of talking about mm -hmm. uh, synthetic fuel. So, so we were sure about the fact that the most obvious way was to use uh, a, a system that we know we have been using for like uh, thousands of years, sales, and using wind because it was available everywhere. And so using these simple uh, things was uh, was for us obvious as a, an axis to, to, to initiate the energy transition. So we are sure about that. But the second thing is that uh, as well, we were sure uh, it was uh, necessary to reach uh, industrial requirements to be able to have this solution applied uh, like, like at the large scale scales and have an impact on the, on the, the industrial, uh, on the, the, the energy transition of the shipping. So for that, we thought it is uh, like better to do uh, an hybrid propulsion using wind and engine um, and to do it on a industrial ship, so a big ship, and to, to do a ship that is big, so have scales economy, so have a, a price that is competitive. And in the same time, with the hybrid propulsion, you are able to like guarantee your transit time. So you are able to say, okay, there is no wind, but I will start my trip, even if there is no wind. And uh, along the sailing, I will have an average of uh, high propulsion with wind and low propulsion, and I will balance, and I will guarantee my transit time and guarantee the reliability of my transport because uh, I'm not depending on the, on the wind. So it's the, the two let's say pillar of uh, how we, we developed our solution. So that's why uh, I said we are not totally propelled by wind, but it, 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 is, uh, it is not. Uh, it, it doesn't, it seems yeah. like that's like the, a reasonable pay, a reasonable direction because you have so many already, I mean, the cargo, the cargo industry, I don't, I don't know the size and the scope, but I, I can only think it's an unimaginably large. It's like just so many ships are out there. Uh, so the, I think as an example of a project of a large ship for you guys, I mean, if you, if you can pull this off, it's just going to be an, a fantastic example of what it could be if people were to scale up. I mean, you're, correct me if I'm wrong, you're in the design development stages, you're putting this kind of a custom solution Mm -hmm. around this but what's you're hoping that this becomes viable enough to scale the operations of building this stuff although shipbuilding is never easy right every <laughs> ship's almost so it, right. these things are so large, gigantic that you know how much how much scaling could there be to reduce the cost of the products that you're doing i don't know can you tell me a little bit about uh, that uh, this uh I think we are at the beginning of a, like an era is is a bit like when you were in the nineties when you were you, if you were asking us uh, like a, a project uh, developer I mean a, um, a wind turbine park developer uh, mm -hmm. and industrial in the in the wind turbine uh, field they were not able to tell you like. Uh, uh we what which scale we are we have to reach to be able to reduce the price but they were able to tell you like we start with uh, expensive uh, expensive costs so it needs to have a long return on investment and it needs to have like a, a support from the market or for from from the, the state but uh, now um like uh, with the scale economies we are able to get uh, a very very cheap uh, electricity from a wind turbine so i think uh, it, it took like 20 years and i think mm -hmm. it, it might take 20 years as well for like uh, getting uh, like a very low return on investment on sales uh, and uh, it it will need i mean the industry will need a lot of uh, pilot project like uh, like us to be able to like uh, um, like uh, fuel the orders and uh, make this uh, industrial process uh, growing. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it was your question? Yes. 
That's exactly yeah, it. I mean, where yeah. you are, it sounds like it's the very start. It's like a, the proof of concept, put yeah. the materials, get the thing going. And then at least for the customer that you have, I mean, I'm presuming, like how long is your projections for their investment in this? Like, do they think about it in 10 year increments or something like at 10 years, this setup will pay itself off because we're reducing between 25 to 80% fuel costs. I mean, what, what's, what are the timeframes you talk about with customers? So, um, let's say, um, when you are a ship owner, so shipping company, uh, and you, you are like us, you, 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 you are investing in a ship. If you invest in a conventional ship, you, you know that your ship, you will be able to sail it to like, if you have problems like uh, making business with your ship, it's like, uh, it's like a real estate. You, you, it's, it's not like as easy like that, but you can uh, sail it on the market. And uh, so you, 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 you have a limited financial risk due to that liquidity of your asset. Mm. But um, when you invest in a wind propel ship, uh, you do not have that much liquidity like uh, like a normal uh, um, uh, ship. So uh, the problem today is that uh, to to get return on investment on sales, it takes it can take uh, like fifteen years, and it's the same amount as a, as a ship. So you need long term contract to be sure that you will get your return on investment for the sales, not for the ship. And uh, so today is, uh, is the main challenge we are facing as a new, uh, as early ad adopters of the sales and uh, as a pure player of uh, wind propel uh, shipping. And uh, it is uh, today, I would say, is our biggest challenge is to find uh, shippers and group of shippers that are able to commit. And, gotcha. Uh, yeah. Well, they have to see it in the, yeah. you know, to see it running, they have to see it working is one angle of that. But I got a but, feeling uh, that you're in a spot. The first one, so <laughs> uh, if everybody is uh, wait, waiting to, to, to see it working, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> so, so for instance, our customer are in group Tux, like uh, 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 Tux, this, uh, this commitment to go, to be the first one to go for, uh, getting transport with wind propulsion and this is uh, a very very ma major commitment because we believe that before and after this ship i mean there will be a before and an after with mm -hmm. our ship canopy uh, and uh, since uh, we got the, the agreement with Arian group and we started to build that ship we are like uh, seeing and noticing that there is a lot more development about uh, wind propel shipping than before. So I guess when we will put the ship uh, in the water and uh, we start operation with it, it will be even uh, even uh, like stronger. So uh, so to, just to say like uh, and and we have our but we need also to have uh, to have other customer and. Uh, we have uh, we we need to see not to to have the people waiting for for seeing it's working but uh, just uh, going for it right i think i mean it's like uh well just to use your real estate an analysis if you yeah. over customize your home then you don't have comparables nearby to compare the what the value of the home where buyers might be but but it doesn't mean that there aren't potential buyers for your awesome customized home we just we just don't, it's not easy to project if it doesn't look like something already in the marketplace. So all I can say is, do you look at things like, do you keep an eye on what's happening with Tesla when you see, I just had a guy on the show about Tesla and the ridiculous demand for their cars, knowing yeah. that they actually had to be the first to put the, put a battery powered car on the road, right? Although there've been a prior attempts, but they were really the first to commercialize that. And, mm -hmm. you know, the risk that they had to take over many years to put a product that no one can say exactly if the demand is there or not, but look at them today, they're overwhelmed with demand to the point where they have to ri <laughs> rise their prices just to get some of the demand off the books because there's just too many people wanting one of these, one of these cars, right? And they can't mm -hmm. make enough of them. 
you look right. at that and think, man, is that is that in the future for us? Is that a scenario in this world? I'm not sure to have well understood your question. Uh, you mean if if we are like uh, uh, thinking that uh, like we do not wait for customer, but as we believe it will be the future and that uh, everybody will will want uh, uh, win purple ship in the future. So let's go. Is it, yeah. Uh, Mean yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for if, if I had the money and uh, yeah, I will go for 100% for it. I will uh, finance a fleet directly because I'm sure in five years or 10 years time, there will be no solution, but we will have the like restrictions and we will have like the, the, the ambitious uh, uh, goals to face with climate change. And uh, so there will be a regulation, etc. And it, it will it will cost so more uh, much more to to still be using fossil fuel that uh, I think will be very competitive. The problem is that uh, uh, it is uh, it is uh, uh, we we need to convince uh, the the market for that and the finance and so it takes time and so I think before getting at the maturity to 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 have such financing to to go for a fleet we need to go through uh pilot project and uh so it is what we are doing today so we need to find a, a good compromise between uh mm. between a, a risk taken by finance and a risk taken by market and uh so we are mixing that you your background is in operations and exactly business development with this type yeah. of stuff right so i mm -hmm. um i i mean i wonder if once you once this boat is actually on the water and doing the work that it does, you know, you might have to put some kind of like get on the wait list scenario for your website. You know? And I wonder if you can create that the, the, the demand that you could then go to, you know, venture capital or whoever to give you the capital to then build the actual you know, a factory, I guess, with your partners. I mean, this is not just you guys, right? There's several, pl there's several players involved with creating this one initial project um, for it. But do you, is this part of the plan? Get the prototype, get that going. And then do you have that next stage in mind? Or you're or just, you're just so consumed with just getting this project on the water that this is where you are today. No, but us, we, we, we are ship owner and shipping company, so uh, we do not have plan to like uh, build uh, sales and, uh, and uh, distribute sales, but we have the plan to build uh, ship that are more and more uh, ecological and to go towards uh, the carbon free emission. And, uh, and we believe uh, that uh, the market is uh, is getting more and more ready. So we hope after our first vessel, we'll be able to develop the, uh, new uh, vessel projects that are and allowing us to like improve and going toward uh, like uh, uh, the most ecological uh, transport possible. Mm -hmm. um, so we are not in a logical from our part to like uh, uh, I mean, we are we are looking for being scalable on our business, but uh, like uh, selling, sh I mean, uh, selling transport for, for and and buying ship is not as easy as a, as a, I mean, it takes time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, these are gigantic uh, <laughs> products. <laughs> this <is> just yeah. <laughs> how do you um? So what what's the you know, right now, what's the business model for you guys as like, are you going to then in the future create the ships before there's a bidder or you're still going to more of the bespoke? Uh, somebody's got to come to you and say, I want a ship like the one you just made for the Ariane group and I need it for the for these parameters. Is that the and then you'll fulfill that type of order or what's the what's your thinking around that? Uh, so we are looking for industrial and shippers coming and say, okay, I would like a sales ship, but of course it, it will not be the same as the Iron Group. So uh, for each market uh, and uh, each uh, charterer, 
uh, we are uh, like uh, thinking about a specific design. Um, and our business basically is uh, um, from a customer need. We imagine a design of ship and then we like, uh, um, like build an offer. Uh, secure, secure is uh, how to say we secure the financing. Okay. Uh, but the financing is um, uh, depending on the commitment we will get from the the customer, and then we come to the customer and say, okay, we can do that innovative project that will allow you to reduce by X percent your CO two uh, footprint. And uh, we will be able for that to give you that price and that transit time. And we need from you um, this commitment of uh, threat for these years. And then we negotiate. And uh, once we got an agreement, then we uh, like uh, start to finance and I mean to find a shipyard and to build the ship and to finance and uh, it takes two years and after we operate the ship and we start to like uh, get earnings when we operate the ship. So we have a very uh, long sail cycling. It, it takes mm -hmm. time for us to, to, to get into operations. That's just the nature of the business. I mean, that's just the nature of yeah. the business you're in. I probably yeah. most ships are, are sort of built in this manner, right? There's a, mm. there's a, a, a freighting, a freight company, they need a new ship. There's somebody who's going to build it. And then they have to mm. secure between all of them, the financing from a third party yeah, to fund exactly. the process. And they want to know, well, what are, what are the products you're moving? Where are the ports you're going? What's the business going to be like to make sure that there's exactly. enough customers there to continue the business. Mm -mm -mm. Cool. This is. I mean, this is a really intriguing yeah. world. Um, it's a. Uh, it's 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 like our business is like a very old school business model, but the way we do it is very innovative. So we are like uh, at the border between two. Well, it's like you know that. I guess that's how ships evolve anyway. Right. Another builder comes, another freight guy goes, can you make the ship bigger? <laughs> They're looking for the next guy can make it bigger because they mm -hmm. found that there's a port that could be X, Y, Z dimensions. And then that becomes the effort. That's the innovative part of it. Right. But in this particular mm -hmm. case, it's like, can we attach the sales, which are, there's already a manufacturer of that. And then can we kind of put the engine and the design of the ship all together? So it all works in a more in an automated fashion right because these are big giant ships that you can't just you can't be worried about the the camp that can't be thinking about the wind necessarily it's got to be real simple for them to operate the ship as they need to do everything right mm -hmm. uh on giant ship it, your, your question is uh, uh if about the automation components so how do you get the sales of these ships into the just general, you know, maneuvering of the ship. Like how complex is that process? Uh, so basically you have a, a, a wind sensor that will grab the wind angle and uh, the wind power. And then you have an algorithm that will uh, like adjust the sails automatically according to the, 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 the the parameters. And uh, if we go above some wind power, then it like uh, stops the sails and uh, lowers the sails. And uh, yeah, it's it's as easy as that. It's, uh, like, first, it's fully automated in that regard. And the, yeah, what about the adjusting of the sails, the, the algorithm just to optimize for the best position? No, the best of team. <laughs> it's fully automated. And of course, when we will like uh, uh, use it, uh, I think we, 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 I mean, our partner uh, might improve step by step, uh, getting like uh, measures and uh, uh, doing some tests will uh, we'll adjust the algorithm to make better adjustment, but uh, it's, there is no human interaction. It's uh, completely automated. Oh, and, man. Uh, yeah. And it is what making the things very industrial because uh, um, if you have to increase your crew 
uh, to to manage that type of uh, technology, then you decrease the competitiveness of your price. So it's it's uh, the, the best way to use it in a very cost effective way and to make it like uh, scalable on the market. Wow. So the so it's run by software. It's automated. The sales are installed. The the manufacturer makes tests and adjusts over time, depending on how the ship's used and everything sort of works in concert. So there's no, when you go to the customer or I guess the captain's going to drive, ride this thing, there's no changes to what they do. You just, you do what you have to do to get the ship where you need it to go. It's going to go, come up and down when the conditions are right Yeah, to yeah. take advantage of the wind. And after there is also constraints on the balance of the ship. So mm. if there is a balance that is, there is balance limits. And uh, this is as well uh, like censored. So it's electric and uh, like automatic. If there is a, a balance that is too important, then it stops the sales as well. Mm. Uh, sometimes you can have like a, a balance of the ship that is not due to the high wind, but because the state of the sea is not uh, is not good, is uh, is severe. So then it impacts the balance of the ship, and so from that 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 uh, that time, then it's it will automatically uh, uh, like stop using the sails. So it's everything is down. automatical. But of course, there is emergency program if there is problems like that. Uh, and I mean, there is procedure that are manual, and uh, we will train our our crew to manage. Uh, those procedures, but um, like in the current way, it's no need of being uh, uh, of have involvement involvement from the crew to manage uh, the, the sales. The sales. It's yeah. just in case something goes wrong, you need to, you need to have a mechanical way to drop the bring the sales down. That's it. Yeah. Which is probably like a switch or some kind of thing that just. It's probably just weighted that way so that those things will come mm. down on its own. Yeah, yeah. after I, I, I simplify the thing, uh, of course, there is like, it took like uh, it, five years of R&D to make, uh, to, to mm -hmm. build the thing. And, uh, and it took a lot of time for us to commercialize it. So it's, uh, it's something complex, but uh, at the end, the use will be as easy as that. Yeah. Wow, uh, but today, if you see, like there are already some ships that are not mercant ships, but uh, yachting uh, mm -hmm. of like 100 meters that are using automated sails, and it works. Uh, it have been uh, they they the first one called Maltese Falcon was delivered uh, like 16 years ago, and uh, it works in a completely automated way, um, and. Actually, it's that ship that inspires us to say, okay, we can do it. Uh, we can like automate uh, like large uh, sails on a yacht that is like 88 meters. Why we cannot do that on a, on a merchant ship that is like uh, maybe 40, 40, 50, 100 meter long. Uh, and so it's like this that we started like uh, five, six, six years ago to, to, to work. What was the, um, I was asked, starting to ask this question a lot, a lot, but what was that? Was there like a moment in this, in this process when you, you know, realized, wow, this is actually going to work. This is going to happen. I mean, anybody that starts a business, you know, you start it going in with, you have to make some assumptions that you, you know, you've seen it work elsewhere or whatever, but what the, was there a moment where you realized, oh, this is actually really happening that I'm going to do this? When uh, we started to, to like uh, uh, winning the round of the tender for our group, uh, at that time we were like, okay, maybe we'll, <laughs> we'll succeed in doing it. Uh, maybe. Um, but before that, uh, we were just convinced that uh, it was uh, a good pass and the best pass to start uh, energy transition in shipping, and that uh, it was obvious uh, from uh, like a conceptual way and from the technical. We got some technical progress that were allowing us to do that, uh, based on uh, like uh, example as the Maltese Falcon, for instance, that are low proof of concept. Uh, 
And so based on that, we, we were thinking it's, it will be very difficult for us to convince a big cheaper uh, and a big industrial company to give us like a long-term uh, threat commitment. But it is so obvious to use wind again on ships to make uh, ecological transport mm -hmm. that we think we can get uh, and convince. And so it is this that this uh, this this very deep conviction that uh, give us the energy during uh, like three years to like prospect and uh, work on uh, like going into big companies, introducing ourselves, uh, showing the the concept on PowerPoint, and uh, like uh, like prospecting so much and uh, getting. Mm -hmm at the maturity to be able to convince uh, someyone like Ariane Group. So, yeah, at the, that, so, so before, before that moment, um, it was very hard for us because uh, sometimes um, we were thinking uh, we, we would not uh, do it. So uh, at, at some moment, it was uh, very, very difficult. But at that time when we were starting to get in the run, and winning the round, yeah, we. I I think to, um, to uh, just to interrupt. I I think that it's very easy to um, underestimate how hard it is to try to go for a project that's never been done before, you know, to try to bring something really new to the marketplace. Even though there might be slight examples in ancillary areas, like you meant, you know, the yachts in this, you know, sixteen years ago, but the to go to plow through that process is just to you know and to deal with the constant rejection of it oh yeah yeah come back so yeah that sounds interesting but uh we're not ready to give you money now we don't know if you know that that part right because you don't have the case study of like and here's the example that we've done it right so that is incredibly difficult and i commend you and your co-founder for plowing through it even though i think you'll reach the point where it's just be obvious like why didn't all ships have this already going right it's, mm -hmm. that's going to happen too it's just when and how long you can continue with that process right but was there something with the arian group that drove them or compelled them to take a chance with you guys i mean were they looking for a ship that you know was reducing had lower carbon usage lo lower carbon emissions were they specifically looking for that or were they just sort of looking for a ship and you guys just put a bid in and said, I think we can even do better than what you're asking. Yeah. Uh, they were not asking for, for a wind propelled ship, uh, for sure. And, uh, like they were asking, like their requirements were focusing on price on transit time and reliability. And, uh, but when we came with our concept, uh, like the engineers of our group that were like uh, people that are very uh, passionate about uh, innovation, uh, mm. like uh, we're willing to get to know more uh, and uh, like working with them, uh, we, we succeed in building a solution that, were, that has no constraints from an operational side, meaning that like uh, you can load the ship and unload the ship uh, with sales or no sales is the same. There is no impact. Uh, and from a price perspective, uh, as uh, the, the, the contract is very long, it allows us to like uh, um, have uh, an amortization of the investment that were like uh, that is will be compensated by the savings so at the end we have a very small impact on price and so after it was taking the risk to 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 take to like to to use that i mean to to award someone that will use this new technology but after it's uh, it's still uh, a, like a motored vessel equipped with sales. So if there is no, like if the sales are not working, uh, it's still then, the job. Yeah, then uh, the, the engine can do the job. So uh, at the end, uh, they understood that uh, there was the technical progress. We were like uh, 
relying on to, to, to do that was existing uh, in not in the world of merchantship, but in other world of selling. So uh, the technical risk was limited by, uh, by this. Uh, and after, from the other risks they could have, it was as well uh, something limited. So that's why they they like, uh, they, yeah, yeah, they they went for it. But but even if there is no, uh, let's say, uh, uh, even if there, the risk was limited for for them, uh, it's a big commitment as well because uh, they could go with. Uh, with, with with like uh, going as usual and uh, mm -hmm. and they 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 took the challenge to go for unusual and i think they will be and i i think they think as well they will be rewarded because in in three years there will be a lot of uh, uh, like uh, international maritime organization regulation about co2 emission and if they would have not chosen us i think they would have like got like like severe restriction and uh so as they the end, uh, it would find be themselves in the them. future struggling to then address to respond to that and it could be more costly at yeah. that point when they totally. have to rush for a solution versus mm. one get ahead of it yeah and I, I bet part of the customer profile i mean you're talking to guys that are launching rockets into space i mean they're used to doing technology that probably hasn't been it's not ubiquitous it's not it's not it's not all over the place right there's only a few a handful of organizations uh, that can do that so yeah, yeah so you, <laughs> but, you know, uh, yeah, the personality yeah, was there you can send satellites in the in the space uh, why we cannot reuse uh, wind again on ship with like a technology like sales it's uh, so exactly you uh, know there was some engineer saying that to himself after he spoke to you, like, what, what, why can't we do this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. Wow. Well, I mean, I just sound like this is a wonderful start to a, to a cool journey that you found yourself in. Um, yeah, I know your background where you were working, where, where was, you know, where did you, you didn't get your start into shipbuilding world. How did you, how did you get here? Uh, yeah, for, basically, yeah, yeah, my, my, my background is, uh, is, uh, my education is uh, is in business and finance, and uh, getting out of uh, uh, business schools, uh, I started in uh, in the finance uh, at Deloitte, and uh, then mm -hmm. I went uh, doing some business development for for a big uh, French uh, company uh, working in the aqua business, and. Um, I wanted to get back to maritime. I mean, to, to not to get back, but to turn my career to maritime because uh, I have uh, like uh, a very big passion. I mean, many things personally that uh, attract me to that uh, industry. Uh, and uh, I have a lot of friends that are my Camp Navy officers because uh, I grew up in a major French port. Mm. And, uh, and so... Some of my friends were like uh, working on the uh, on the, their master thesis at the end of their uh, of their American Navy uh, schools, um, working on on a, on a on a on a thesis on how to reuse wind and sails again on on American ships, and so they were study the technical uh, like and uh, regulatory constraints to do so. And at the end of their, their work, they reached about the conclusion that it was feasible and that there were people that had the skills and company that had the skills to do that. And so they wanted to build like a concrete project and, uh, and, and, and an economically and a technically viable project of wind propel vessels, uh, industrial wind propel vessel. And so they came to talk to me to ask me some uh, some uh, advice on the how to work mm -hmm. on the uh, about the finance and about the commercial and uh, and so I jump in the project and I start to help them and then they ask me oh you do you want to get partner with us and uh, we we need someone like you with your profile because we are American Navy officers so we need people like someone able to talk about finance and to support like the sales. 
And so that's why I came in the, in the project. And I started in the industry uh, because before I was not working in that industry. And uh, basically, we started uh, very young. Uh, we started the project where we were 26. Uh, so like 26 years old. Z- yeah. Uh, <laughs> now uh, we are 31, but uh, yeah. You're so. still young. You still see yeah, that I long see runway. Yeah. 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 Well, hey, I started, <laughs> I started my own business at 27, but mm. I, sh- I, I'm, I've always admired people that made products or made products happen. I mean, well, I mean we make products, mm-hmm. we're consultants in tech and we do database work, but at the end of the day, you can't quite see it the same way as if like, you know, we built that car, or we built that ship or we built that house, you know, there's mm-hmm. something about that for, you know, s- you know, software, people like me have been in software that I would just kind of admire that kind of, that kind of effort. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'll let me leave you with this question then, you know, when you jumped on at an early stage at 26, the, probably the, <laughs> you, I had, I don't know if you had the same experience, but I, had I known how difficult it'd be to do this, I don't know if at 27, I would have done the same thing, but I'm sure glad I did it. It's almost like, you know, the level of how naive I was about the challenge it was going to be was great because then that's what got me through <laughs> the toughest parts did you have a similar vein is that similar yeah for questions? sure we uh, we always say with my my partners uh like if we would have known how how uh, how much how, how how big was the, the change we were going through maybe we would have no, like not would have never done it but yeah after when you start and you are getting in and then you meet people and uh, but the, the things that support us is to meet people and mm. to meet partners and to have people that are that like uh, like were uh, trusting in, in, in what we were doing mm. and that were at top uh, level uh, and that uh, then it makes our story like more credible and uh, and then when you start uh, after you are in and so you go through the challenge step by step and uh, then you day by day and, and you, you, you do it. And uh, yeah, so this is our, uh, our, uh, I mean, it took us like four years and now it uh, to like to start building and now uh, next year. So it, one year of building and then another year. So it, it's six years before getting the products done. So, yeah. Amazing. Uh, and when we when we started, we were thinking, okay, in six months we got the agreement for that, <laughs> and then it's gone. And so in three years we have the ship built. Like it took us twice the time. So <laughs> right, but maybe the next project will take you closer, faster, because you'll have this experience okay. now. Yeah, I hope so yeah, we go you know. like much faster now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and uh, and uh, also. Just curious, what's your what's the you know your early stage prospecting style? Like, what did you do? Did you just pick up the phone and just email a bunch of people and just like, can I have coffee? What what were what was the thing you? Because I'm sure your partners, if they were more policy and design and engineering, they probably and you're the more the money finance guy. They probably made you the guy to go prospecting i got it i got yeah, it I, I go prospecting i have a partner that is uh from uh from the technical uh the technical that has a technical background but is very good at sales as well okay. and uh so we are going both and now we have a team of uh we, we are like uh, we have a wider team for doing that 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 but uh, uh, the way we do is to not to go prospect everywhere uh mm. because as uh, we we try to understand on which market it will be smart to 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 be and uh, where we can find a long term threat commitment and so for that uh, we build up a ne- network of of people willing us to understand how we can get positioning and then we find like uh, the people that can be leaders meaning um, the customer that will be able to, by the way, like they will trust us and they will commit, and then we will get like a bunch of commitment behind them uh, because uh, like they are like big 
mm. and as well they are able to just with their volume to bring a, a lot of uh, uh, um, validation. Yeah, yeah, yeah validation, validation and uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's a, and so we when we got that we try to meet like top manager. So basically, it's by email or LinkedIn, uh, uh, or sometimes you got the phone. Right? We do not have like a prospection. Like uh, I don't know if we were like uh, uh, selling a software, and then you you have like a, a big uh, database List. of uh, prospects, and then you go with uh, like uh, a software like HubSpot, let's say, and then you go like uh, prospecting like crazy. No, this is oh, relationship. Yeah, you have the relationship build mm -hmm. over time. I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But man, that's quite a home run to hit off your first customers, somebody like the area. I mean, that get that project done. That's going to be a huge validating tool for yeah. other doors will surely open once that's yeah. underway. Yeah. Um, are you guys ready for the potential news? I mean, you've already getting some media. I got me to call. You know, wanted, I saw that. I saw I can't even remember where I came across from you guys. But I was like, holy crap, I got to I got to meet these guys. Um mm -hmm. And, uh, but I can only imagine once that ship's actually in, in the waters and press releases are made <laughs> in basically two, in a year, right? Year, year yeah, and a half? In a year, yeah, yeah. Everything yeah, goes yeah. well? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's definitely have you back on, on the show, Omri. Thank you so much. This was really cool. And I commend you. I know that there's probably lots of nights, lots of tough nights that you're just stress trying to figure out like what how is this happening you know what what's you know because as you get into a project you just start to understand the true challenges not the ones mm. you presumed there were right but the ones you didn't even expect mm. and yeah. then having to figure out how to how to address those can be really exhausting but um i can't wait to see this project in the water so please let's do this again certainly when we get close to that or if you have anything else to to announce in the near future doors yeah. open here Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for the invitation and I will be happy to, to come back. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you guys also for listening, man. I really appreciate it. This, these are the stories I want to keep bringing. So please let me know if there are other companies out there doing awesome stuff like these guys. Okay. Take care, everybody. Bye. Visit through the noise.us for more episodes and subscribe to our newsletter. This show is produced by Through the Noise Consulting, uniting external communications and internal IT functions to ensure data and privacy are protected while creating innovative communications platforms. Want to start your own podcast? We can help. Visit GetThroughTheNoise.com to learn more.